Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two of a three-part series on the topic of validation and verification. And in this second lecture here, we're going to talk about the verification strategy. And we'll talk about what we do at the component level, and that can be either if we're talking about a software component or a hardware component. It doesn't necessarily, when we say component, it doesn't mean a physical piece part like a resistor. And then we'll talk about verifying subsystems and then finally the system itself. Now, if your system is a very complex um, and safety critical system, say avionics, there's additional testing that you're going to want to do. And this entails typically hardware in the loop or sometimes just referred to as HIDL. Then you would migrate on to a system integration lab or SIL. And then you take your full system um, maybe the aircraft itself and you you put it in a controlled environment and once you get enough confidence about that you would fly it or in in the real environment in, in its intended application and lastly i'll talk about the importance of robustness testing so component or unit level uh, verification does the component io meet the specs that have been defined are the correct actions being taken to triggers and then you're going to ask are these actions repeatable and then you're going to try to understand is there any sensitivity to variation? What does it look like in terms of if I were to vary temperature or voltage, you know, if, if it's still within the specification of the component, what does it look like, you know, under variation for that? Now, once we understand different, you know, smaller elements, we then move on to integration testing where we're now testing uh, subsystems. And what we're going to ask ourselves here is, is given a trigger is the correct data being transferred between modules um, at, at the right time. And not only the, in terms of timing, but are there any unintended actions being taken by other modules in the response? So if one module, you know, um, sets some uh, discrete line from low to high, what does the, you know, what does the, the downstream module, how does it react to that, you know, not only in, in time, but also in functionality. Now, <clears throat> when we get into system testing, uh, here's what's called HIDL testing or hardware in the loop. And the left-hand side is a, just an example of a piece of avionics. And what we have, say this could be, uh, you know, where we're trying to simulate uh, the airplane flight controls. It requires a lot of, you know, very high fidelity in terms of inputs and outputs that have to go on. So this, this system on the right, is a hardware in the loop uh, test rack and its sole purpose is to stimulate the hardware on the left and capture the outputs in real time and we need we need you know timing is 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 of great importance because a lot of a lot of instances you're you're looking at how much of a delayed response the system has so how this is done is the software is compiled and loaded onto the target platform. And we, when we say target, it's the, it's the actual system under test, what's happening on the left-hand side. And then inputs are usually simulated. If you can buy or, or get hold of other systems that are talking to your device, you can Im implement them in the rack on the right, but typically they're so expensive and there's so many, you have to, you have to get by with a lot of simulation. The next step is, is you move on to the system integration lab or what's called the SIL. And this is an example of a, the space shuttle avionics integration lab. So here you, now you can sit in this flight deck and you can actually sit and, and go through a simulation of takeoff, flying and landing of the space shuttle to where you, you're not actually sitting in the space shuttle, but when you sit in here, you feel like you are. And now you are, you are now exercising your equipment as, as close as you can to to the intended environment without actually having to have your own space shuttle or spend fuel to actually run these scenarios. Then, once you have enough confidence in the SIL, you move on to full system, uh, full system in a controlled environment. So this is a an example of a, a UAV that's uh, uh, been hoisted and mounted in an anechoic chamber. And an anechoic chamber is used to expose, um, you know, the, the aircraft or platform to RF conditions and see how it responds and how it reacts to those different RF environments. 
And this is a very large facility. Um, I've been to this facility. As you can see in the back here, there's actually a platform with a railing that you can stand on. So this is a, a very large UAV with all the avionics installed and we're now uh, exposing it to different RF emissions and seeing how it performs. And once you understand how that system or platform performs in the controlled environment, then lastly, you put it into, into a real flight. And these are very expensive. And, and what you want to do is do as much as you can in all the previous testing to ensure that you have a high confidence that when you finally fly the platform that you're not going to run into problems. And then lastly, robustness testing. Now this, this entails, so you, you just don't want, in a lot of these situations, you want your product, your end product to be robust. So you want to test what's called, there's edge testing where you test not only the minimum volt input voltage, but the maximum input voltage. And, the, and input voltage is just some parameter, but it doesn't matter. It, doesn't have to be input voltage, but you don't want to just test the nominal voltage. You want to test the lower end and the higher end. That's the point. No matter if it's voltage or current or some other, uh, you know, speed of some, you know, uh, some interface, you want to throttle it to the minimum and maximum at, at the different edges. Then you want to do what's called corner cases. And it's not about, you know, just testing one or varying one input at the time, but you know, you know, testing it at multiple extremes simultaneously. So you might apply the maximum voltage at the minimum temperature or the minimum voltage at the maximum temperature of operation. So what you're trying to do is, is if you, the corners are, if you were to say, you know, the x-axis is voltage and the y-axis is temperature, you were testing each of those four corners of temperature and voltage. And then lastly, boundary testing. So you want to test the area around the edges. So let's say your input voltage is five volts. Uh, you want to test it, and that's your max. Um, you want to test values right up to it, say at 4.9, right exactly at five. And then you want to go maybe a little over the edge or over that boundary, and you want to then test at 5.1. You don't want to kill it, but you just want to see what would happen if there was a glitch on that on that five volt line, would your system still be robust enough to handle that glitch? And that's that's important. And I'll stop here and we'll wait for the third uh, video.